how can I be so convinced and convicted? It's based on the literal words of Jesus Christ himself. In Matthew chapter 23, at verse 37, as Christ looked around at the hustle and the bustle around him in the city of Jerusalem, he said, O oh, Jerusalem, O oh, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophet and stoned those who were sent, how I would want to gather you as a hen gather her hand on their wing, but you would not let me. Therefore, your house is left to you desolate. And in chapter 24, uh, the disciples came to Christ and said, look at this magnificent temple, beautiful structure. And Christ said to them, the day is coming when not one stone will be left upon another. It will all come thrown down. And verse 3 says, as they departed the city and went to the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to Christ and said, Master, tell us, when shall these things be? What will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? And Jesus said, I'm glad you asked. Verse 5 says, For many will come in my name, saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. This false Christ. I, have you noticed in the recent years how many false people have claimed to be the Messiah? I remember when I lived in Miami back in the late 80s, early 90s, I remember distinctly there was a gentleman who was walking around in white robe, and his name was Yahweh Ben Yahweh. And he was declaring that he was the Messiah. And you know what? People believed him because people followed him. So as Christ said in the last days, many will come and say that I'm Christ. In verse 6, continues says, you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Verse 7 says, nations will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. Doesn't this read like the nightly news lead-off highlights? Doesn't it? Wars, just a few. Afghanistan, Syria, Iraq, Yemen, Ethiopia, Israel, Palestine, Ukraine, just to name a few of wars that are going on right now in our world today. It says there will be famines. I looked it up. It says the Demo Democratic Republic of Congo it says right now, there are more people facing severe hunger crisis than has ever been recorded by any country. In Yemen, 80% of the population of population is in need. In Afghanistan, 47% of the population is in need of aid. In Syria, 74% of the population is in need of aid. Pestilences, and that one is very easy. COVID, it's going on right now. And I, I want to declare to you that this is not the last, it's just, the beginning. These are the last days. Earthquakes in various places. I looked it up last night and there were several earthquakes yesterday. Just to name three. There was a 6.1 on the Richter scale in the Fiji region. There was one 5.3 east of the Kuril Islands and there was one that was 4.4 in somewhere in Argentina. Just to name a few in various places. And verse 11 says, and many false prophets will rise up 
and deceive many. Recently, we have seen so many false prophets. Do you remember Marshall Applewhite and the Heaven Gate cult? Sadly, sadly, these people lost their lives thinking that they will be taken to the next dimension in the Haley, Haley Bob Comet. What about David Koresh of the Branch Davidian in Waco, Texas? So many people, innocent people, lost their lives. And I believe David Koresh, he may, he, he, he may be, be considered both as a false Christ and a false prophet. Verse 12 says, the love of many will grow cold. If you look around us now, we see so many loveless behaviors in our society. Murder, crime and violence on the increase, police brutality. It's all because men's hearts are void of love because they do not know the Jesus Christ that we know. Verse 14 says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world as a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. When the devil brought COVID-19 upon this world, he thought he was going to stifle the work of God. He thought he would limit the message that would go out to the world. But boy, was he wrong. I believe COVID through the internet is fulfilling this prophecy. This gospel is going around the world with such power and clarity. Verse 29, he says, and immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun shall be darkened. The moon shall not give her light. Stars shall fall from heaven. And then you shall see appear in the heaven the sign of the Son of Man. The Son of Man will be coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great clarity. I looked at history. And history documents the New England dark day, May 19, 1780, the darkest day on the East Coast. The, the history account says candles were required from noon until the middle of the next day. It says the roosters crowed, the woodcocks whistled, the frogs peep as if night had fallen at 2 p.m. Stars, the great meteoric shower of November 13, 1833. These are the signs that Jesus mentioned that would occur in the last days just before his second coming. You know, another place where the end time is recorded is in Daniel chapter 12. When Daniel wanted to understand more of the prophecy, Daniel chapter 12 verse 4 says, the, back, the, the, Lord, the angel of the God said to Daniel, shut up the words, seal the book, even to the time of the end. And in verse 9 it says, go thy way, Daniel. For the words are closed up and sealed until the time of the end. So Daniel, the things that you see are pertaining to the end time. And I love the book of Revelation. Verse 1, chapter 1, verse 1 says, And this is the what? The revelation of Jesus Christ. It was sealed in Daniel but it was revealed in the book of Revelation. So when we see, when we see the prophecies 
are the events of revelation being fulfilled, we should look up. We should be certain that know that we are living in the end of time. When we look at the history of the seven churches, when we look in the book of Revelation, the events surrounding the opening of the seven seals, the horses, the colored horses, which represented represent the different stages of God's church in history. And when the seventh seal, the scripture says, when the seventh seal was open, there was silence in heaven for half an hour. Theologians believe this half an hour represents the time when Jesus Christ is coming back to this earth to claim his people. So we are living today. We're living today between two seals, the sixth seal and the seventh seal. The next major event is Jesus Christ's second coming. In chapter 3 of Revelation, it talks about a beast, the first beast that came out of the sea, had seven heads, ten horns. It had a blasphemous name. It said one of his head was wounded, but this wound was healed. This beast would rule for 42 months or 1260 days or prophetic days.
came down from Mount Sinai with the Ten Commandments. As they were approaching the encampment, the scripture said they heard noise. They heard shouting. And this was noise of someone being conquered or someone being captive. But it sounded like noise of joy and singing. No, singing. They were celebrating. And when Moses and Joseph got closer, they saw the calf gold that Aaron built. And the people were dancing around the calf. The scripture said Moses was angry. And he said Moses actually burned the calf. He crushed it into powder, put it in water, and made the people of Israel drink it. Have mercy. But down in verse 25, it says, they had gone so far, the people were even naked. They stripped off their clothes as they danced around these idols. Then in verse 26, Moses stood. It says, Moses stood at the gate of the camp. And he said unto the people, who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. Who is on what? The, the Lord's, Lord's side. side. Let him come unto me. And the scripture said, the children of Levi came to Moses. And Moses told the children of Levi, he says, let every man get his sword. And let him go through the gate of the city, throughout the camp and camp. Let him slay his brother and his sister. And that day, the narrative tells us that three Thousand men were killed by the sword of the children of Levi. I, know, I read this for the first and I read this earlier on. I thought this was a very harsh depiction of a cruel God, you know. But when I looked deeper, I realized that this, in fact, was an act of love by God. Mm -hmm. You see, through the year, God demonstrated to the children of Israel his love. His superiority, his authority, his power. He delivered them. He delivered them miraculously through plague from captivity in Egypt. When they got to the Red Sea, the water parted. They crossed on dry land. The Egyptians were buried alive in that same pathway. When they complained that they, complained that they needed, uh, they, 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 they missed the flesh parts of Israel. Mm -hmm. Egypt, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. The Bible says God gave me quail. Quail. Quail, and they ate so much that was coming out through. <laughs> but for long term, for long term, the scripture said God gave them manna. Six days, five days, they pick up just enough for that one day. On the sixth day, if they kept, it was kept over, it was falling and get right. That's right. But on the seventh day, God said what? Pick up twice as much because there won't be any on the seventh day of the Sabbath. And they picked up twice as much. They used them Friday, Saturday, sixth day. And also on the seventh day, it did not spoil. You see, God provided for them water from a rock. And God did all of this to declare to them who he was. And they still did not surrender themselves to God. Help us, Lord. You see, probation at some point Probation will come. Mercy will not last forever. Help At us, some Lord. point, justice, justice will demand accountability for your choice. In these last days, saints of God, the remnant church, we need to declare this distinct message. A message that said there is a line. There is a line. On one side of the line is the kingdom of God. On the other side of the line is the kingdom of the devil. On one side of the line is the kingdom of light. On the other side is the kingdom of darkness. Help, Lord. And if you notice, there is a clear, distinct, distinct difference in contrast between the two. And saying we need to tell the world that if they are not on God's side, by default, 
they are on the devil's side. Mm -hmm. You cannot straddle the line. You cannot have one foot on one side and the other foot in the other side. No, there is no neutral ground. There is no, no man's land. You're on one side or the other. And we need to declare clearly and loudly and distinctly that time for excuses are over. It's over, Aaron that's right. Was saying, Moses, Moses, you know the people. Moses says, no, it's time for people to make a stand to declare, declare clearly where they are in their choice between God and the devil. Amen. That's right. You see, the church, and another thing I, I, I notice here, see, it is very important. It is very important. It is very important that we tell folks clearly that the answer to the question, whose side are you on? The choice that you make has eternal consequences. Eternal consequences. If you're on God's side, you'll have eternal life. If you're on the devil's side, you will have eternal death. You see, saints, we need to choose wisely because you're not going to be able to blame God for your destiny. No, no, no. God does not choose for us. We make the choice. All God does is honor our choice. That's right. And saints of God as a church today, as the remnant church today, as the remnant church today, we have a very special mission, a very solemn responsibility. In Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 3, Ezekiel says, I call you to be watchmen, watchmen on the walls of Zion to give warning, warning to the people. In chapter 33, it says, if people hear the trumpet and they do not heed the warning, then their blood won't be upon the shoulder, uh, shoulder of the watchman. But if you make the sound, no, if you make the sound and they don't respond, then their blood won't be upon the watchman's shoulder. But if the watchman sees death and destruction coming and does not make the sound so the people can hear that death is coming, then God is saying the blood of those who are destroyed will be upon the shoulders of the watchman. What kind of watchman are you? Help us, Lord. I don't want people's blood to be on my shoulder. Help us, By Lord. God's grace, I'm going to be a watchman declaring the clear and present truth of Jesus Christ. These are the last days Jesus Christ is about. You see, the watchman, the watchman doesn't determine who is saved. No. The watchman just makes the sound. The watchman gives the, uh, the alarm. This alarm is a unique alarm. It's a very distinctive sound. So people cannot confuse what they heard. When it comes, they need, they will know clearly that this alarm is telling that trouble is ahead. Jesus Christ is about to come. Yes. This is the mission of the church today. Yes. Despite what others may think, what others may say, the church has one purpose, one main purpose, and that is to be servants of the Most High God, to be watchmen upon the wall. And uh, I, uh, I have this other scripture here. I, I'll go through it quickly. Ezekiel chapter 9. The scripture talks about the call was made, and six men came from the gate. And it says, one of those six men had a writer's inkhorn, and the command was given to those with the writer, writer to those with the writer's inkhorn, the one with the writer's inkhorn, to go through the city and put a mark upon the forehead of those who are crying out for Jesus Christ. 
And then the command was given to the others who had swords in their hand. And they were commanded to go throughout the city and smite those who don't have the mark. You know, this, this reminds me of Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6. When the sixth seal was opened. And the scripture says, John says, the people were crying to the mountains, fall on us, fall on us, for the great day of his wrath has come, and who shall be able, able to stand? To stand. Who shall Saints be of God, I declare that the answer came loud and clear in chapter 7. It says there were four angels holding back the four corners, and God sent another angel, and this angel told those four angels, said, Hold back the wind of strife. Hurt not the earth, nor the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of God in their forehead. Saints, saints of God, only those with the ink horn mark in their forehead were saved in the book of Ezekiel. Similarly, at the end of time, in these last days, only those with the seal of God in their foreheads will be saved. Amen. So, Mother saints Sarah. of God, we need to be alerting the people of the world. We need to let them know clearly that a day of reckoning is coming. And there is only one way of escape, and that is to have the mark of Jesus Christ in your core, to surrender your life fully and totally to Jesus Christ. I think my, I think my transportation is here, so I need to finish up here. <laughs> finish up, but I, I need to tell you this. Speak the word. Joel chapter 2, verse 5, 15 says, Blow the trumpet, sanctify the past. It says, priests and ministers. I'm not talking about Pastor Jonathan. Revelation says, each of us is a royal priesthood. Yes, yes, yes. Each of us is a minister, not just Pastor Jonathan. That's right. And it says, the priests and the ministers should weep, weep between, between the, the porch, porch and the altar. And the altar. Amen. Simply saying, you know, the porch. The area between the porch and the altar is the location where the priest would make intercessions for the people of God who remain out in, in out in the other court just beyond the wall, weeping and mourning. You see, weeping is not a sign of weakness. Weeping is not only a sign of despair. I declare to you, Hannah. In 1 Samuel, Hannah, when Hannah was desperate for a child, Scripture says she went into the temple and there she poured out her heart. Yes, yes, in yes. And in weeping. Yes, yes, yes. That Eli thought that she was crazy. And there when she prayed, the scripture tells us that God heard her prayer. She conceived and she bore a son. She had made a vow with God that she'll give this child back to God. She fulfilled her vow. Her vow. She brought Samuel, the child that was born, and she gave the name Samuel. She brought Samuel at the age of 12 to the temple and left Samuel there to serve in the house of God. And God, God rewarded, God reward, rewarded her faithfulness. She was blessed. She was blessed more again, not once, not twice, not thrice, but she was blessed four times more. The scripture said she had two more boys and two more girls. Praise so the Lord. They were weeping and mourning between the altar. People will hear the message. You know, I, I, I you know, as a saint of God today, there is no porch and there's no literal altar, <laughs> but there's a metaphorical porch and altar that we need to be weeping and mourning 
for the souls of men and women. And you know, if we did that, the church would be so packed today. Mm -hmm. We'd we'll be busting at the scene. We wouldn't have room to put people because people would be hearing the message of God. You see, God did it back in the day of Pentecost. He will do it again today. Yes, so he I will. Pray, I pray that today, God's remnant church, Tucson and Sharon church, I'm talking to us in particular. Don't look to your right, don't look to your left. I'm talking to you, each of us individually. I pray that we will be focused. I pray that each of us will cloud and declare by our words and by our lifestyle that the good news, the good news of salvation in Jesus Christ. I just want to encourage you today, saints. Sometimes it will be challenging. Sometimes you'll face difficulties. But I just want to encourage you, just like Abraham, when Abraham and Isaac, with the wood and the fire, as they were going up the side of the mountain, heard one preacher said, as they were going up one side of the mountain, the ram was coming up the other side of the mountain. And at the appropriate time, God revealed his providence to Abraham. Amen. We may be going up the rough side of the mountain now. But saints, I want to remind you that as you're going up the rough side of the mountain, your provision is coming up the other side of the mountain. Amen. And when the time is right, we serve an on-time God. Yes, he is. When the time is right, God will reveal his provision to you. Amen. Saints of God, he is an untimed God. And Abraham called him Jehovah, Jireh, my God, my provider. Amen. I appeal today quickly, one minute. Is there someone who wants to say, God, I want to give my life to you today? I want to commit myself to you fully and totally in these last days. Is, that about, is there someone to just stand up? If you want to give your life to Christ, would you stand up? Is there someone here today you're not certain? You're not certain about your calling election? Amen. Praise God. Each of us here, praise God. Amen. Glory, hallelujah. What about recommitting yourself to Christ? Stand up, please. If you want to recommit, rededicate, and reconsecrate, would you stand, please? Praise God. Father, we thank you for these precious ones, oh God. You have seen our response. I pray that you'll move, oh God, in a mighty way. Empower us and use us in these last days, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen and amen. God bless you, Please be seated. going to ask you to please stand for our benediction. As the scripture read, it said, knowing the time that it thusly becomes high time to awake out of sleep. Let us ponder that today and this upcoming week. Come out of sleep. Recommit yourself. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this message. Lord, we ask in Jesus' name that anything that would hinder us, Lord God, from reconnecting with you and fulfilling, Lord God, your plan for our lives, that you would take it from us, Lord God, that we might be your sons and daughters in spirit and in truth. And share, Lord God, with others as they come along our way in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you. Peace. Amen. Oh, my God.
Christmas is based on 